Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another great conversation. Today, we have Shimon Wudobinsky with us. And our topic is very controversial for a lot of people, climate change and sea level rise. So Shimon, welcome. Thank you, Gladys. I'm glad to be here. And uh, I can say that I'm a professor at uh, Florida International University, known as FIU here. And I'm studying earth and environment. You're also a professor of geophysics. That's right. I'm, I'm a professor of geophysics, but I don't say it that often because people ask me, what is geophysics? <laughs> so you can and tell them a little I, bit. I say, so it's, geophysics is the physics of the earth. And uh, we use the physical tool to understand different uh, processes like earthquakes, like tectonic plate motion. Uh, but it sounds very frightening to people. So I tend to say that I'm studying the earth and the environment. So. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. That sounds good. Um, so let me tell you, let me ask by going back a little bit in time, exactly a year ago, the pandemic started. It was a global pandemic. Countries started to close one by one. And there was a lot of talk of the blueprint that we were able to actually see for the first time, the change in the environment was for the first time that we were able to go before and after. And examples like in Venice, the dolphins. Other examples were that a lot of countries were able to see more animals walking freely. So tell me a little bit of what the pandemic did and how do we move forward? Okay, so you brought up very uh, nice uh, examples that uh, how uh, the pandemic, or actually the you know, result of the pandemic, we had the lockdown, and uh, the lockdown created an impact on the environment near us. Uh, so there were no flights, there were no people didn't drive, no cruise ships. So uh, it was very calm conditions and it was actually allowed the, uh, the wildlife to feel more comfortable and get out to places that they usually won't go. Uh, so the Venice Lagoon, usually it's very busy with, uh, yes. with boats, with uh, cruise ships. Uh, you're all familiar with that. It. It's very hard to move, to find a hotel in Venice because there are so many people there. Suddenly it was quiet. So it was actually really peaceful and uh, the usual amount of pollution that we produce also been reduced. So that was a, the direct impact in the very early days when we had the lockdown. Also in many cities, uh, animal wildlife came out, they were looking for food. Actually in some places uh, like in Southeast Asia, animal came to, to towns because there were no tourists who came to feed them. So they went out to look for food. Uh, so there are different impacts. So that was the early days of lockdown. After we came out of the lockdown, they had different effects of the, the pandemic. Suddenly we use a lot of uh, sanitizing material. We use masks. We use so many things that where do they go? They go to landfill, they go back to the environment. So we, it's not just clear cut that everything is good for the environment because we have also situations that actually we impact the environment by much more trash that the, the pandemic produces. So we have here effect in one way, it's helping the environment. In second, other way, we produce so much more trash that it's impacting the environment in the opposite uh, direction. Well. Yes. So. But I remember clearly the picture of the blueprint of, the, of, of Earth, that it yeah. was clear compared to the pollution that, was, that had impacted a lot of the countries. Mm -hmm. And now that we're going back, planes are starting, flights are starting to pick up, borders are starting to open. How do we go back 
How do we eliminate or not eliminate because it cannot be eliminated, but what can we do moving forward? Okay, so we, we have the impact is, we saw the, what's we call the short-term impact that within the days or the weeks after the, the lockdown. Now we, we need to think about how things are rebounding back and this is a longer term. Uh, so the longer term is how do we need to improve our environment to reduce the pollution, all of these, uh, to, to think that yes, the, the pandemic gave us a very good lesson that we can do better if we, we uh, consume less, if we drive less, if we fly less. Oh, so we need to find, if we still want to do all of that, we need to find alternative technologies that will replace these polluting uh, technologies like driving with electrical car is better than with car with uh, regular gasoline. Uh, flights, uh, using more efficient uh, airplane, maybe we'll be able to convert the airplane also to electrical airplane in not right now, but maybe in 20 years there are some companies that work on that. Uh, so uh, this is the impact on the environment that needs to be done uh, by us people consume less and uh, supporting technologies that replace these uh, uh, polluting and consuming uh, technology existing one with better ones. So really this was like an eye opener, like a conscience awakening. Absolutely, like we can see that uh, we can do better if we are forced to. Uh, what happens with the factories? Well, some of the factories, if you remember the, a year ago, some of the factories, they shut down and people went to work for work uh, from home. Some factories, they had to continue. They were considered as essential uh, a working place. Uh, so it's, it's, there wasn't just a, the economy didn't completely shut down there was a significantly impact on the economy, but it wasn't completely shut down. Uh, but the, the factories, if we can improve again, improve the technology, reduce the pollution, reduce the amount of energy that used there and the type of, uh, we don't want to use so much fossil fuel when we go start talking to climate change, we understand how that impact the, um, our atmosphere and our life, uh, so we need to consider all of these, how to reduce energy consumption also. So there we go to the climate change. Yes, the climate change. So one uh, thing- there, Climate change, there's two ways, because there are the people that really advocate for climate change and are very well aware on everything that's going on while there are the others that do not believe in climate change, that they do not believe that this is real. So the question is why it's a question of belief. It should be a question of science. If science, if the evidence shows that there is a change, we should follow the evidence. It's not do we believe in that or not believe in that. And the evidence uh, show that there was a significant increase in temperature, in the amount of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over the past uh, 200 years since the, uh, basically with, there's a little bit of a delay, but since the, uh, the beginning of the industrial evolution. So there is an increase in the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and that's the science. Uh, there is an increase in temperature and every year in the past decade, the temperature were higher and higher. So the last 10 years were the, the highest in the record of 150 years since we have measurements of temperature. So it's not about belief, it's accepting fact. Do you accept fact or not? Uh, that's the way it is. Now, if people will say, uh, we don't believe, did, did you get vaccinated? Do you believe in science? Did you, so it's, it's, just a question of uh, accepting the fact or fighting the fact uh, for your convenience. But if you uh, accept science, and uh, most of us do because we have much better life when we have modern medicine, we have all the technologies, 
everything comes with science. I mean, even the um, the phone that we use, yes? Yeah, that's Our right. cell phone, it is with science and we communicate. So if we accept that, we take the, the benefits out of science, we should follow the evidence. And the evidence show very clearly that the temperature has increased over the 150,000 uh, 50 years significantly. Uh, we should accept it as, as a fact, not not say it's not it's a question not a, it. yeah it's not a belief or not is now what people are saying that it's not uh, the, the denier said in the beginning that it didn't happen now the, since it's very clear that it did happen we have the increase in temperatures many some of the deniers say yeah but it's a natural process uh, and it's true some of the processes are natural and some of uh, human impacted like yeah. what? What is, for example, a natural cause okay. in the sense, and what would be the impact that we have caused? Okay, so natural uh, causes is that the Earth is, a, we think about the Earth as something very stable, doesn't change, but the Earth is changing all the time. So when we look at the different time period or different time scales, uh, we see different processes. So there is a, in the Earth's history, we had period of uh, glaciers. So, the, and now we have period of uh, interglaciers. So it's a, there is less of a, a, the Earth's warm got out of this cycle of being in under glacial conditions into what we call now uh, interglacial conditions. So that was a natural uh, process. It, it, the last time we had the glaciers, it was about, 13,000 years ago, and uh, there were glaciers in North America, in the Canada was covered by glacier, and, and they, they melted. This is a natural process uh, that takes uh, uh, maybe 10,000 of years, 100,000 of years. We have these cycles. We know the cycles. We can follow them. So this is a natural process. So the Earth has been warmed in the past 14,000 years or even longer. Now, what happened is that the rate of change is very high. What happened in 150 years, it's much faster than the, the longer terms of what happens in the past uh, 10,000 years. So we see very rapid increase in temperature and very rapid increase in the uh, amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So what happened, there were also in the Earth's history period that we had high uh, carbon dioxide like we have now. But these periods were very warm. So what a few temp a few degrees higher than today, when we say degrees, it we take the average of the temperature all over the earth, day and night, winter and, and summer, and we do average. So the people are calculating all of these. And we can see how things are changing, not just in one location, one season, and things like that. So so things have been changing. So the natural ones are pretty slow, but what happened now are very high changes. And I, I heard the analogy, the amount of carbon dioxide that we have now in the atmosphere means that it's gonna be, so the temperatures on Earth should be much warmer. And it's like you have the oven and you turn the, uh, the heater on and it's still uh, warming up. It's, we still didn't get there. But we will get there. We will get there eventually. Eventually. So there is a delayed response until the heater is producing all of the heat. So that's what happens in the Earth, that we have the carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere and it keep uh, warming up the, the Earth's atmosphere and then the oceans and everything else around that. We're approaching sooner, very soon, next season of hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a lot of people that say that hurricanes have not gotten stronger. There's the other people that say that they have gotten stronger. Tell me a little bit about the hurricanes. We live in South Florida, we're impacted every year. Every year, January 1st, we're on high alert. And some people would say, no, hurricanes all existed all the time. Look at Hurricane Andrew was a category five. And now we had a few category fives hurricanes. 
So is that part of the climate change? Okay, so uh, we have to think wh what is a hurricane? So hurricane is a way of uh, energy that is stored in the, uh, the ocean, the surface of the ocean to release into the atmosphere. And uh, so it's something that happens almost every year in some places in the world, it's called typhoon, cyclone. It's not unique only to us. It's a way the, uh, the atmosphere is, is working. It's uh, getting the energy and releasing it up to the, uh, up to the atmosphere. Now, uh, over the years, the, uh, there is variability. Not every year is the same because uh, there are different conditions that uh, promote uh, hurricane activity. Certain condition actually suppresses them. Like uh, if we have year, if you heard the terms El Nino, it's, it, it's something that happens every few years. So El Nino conditions uh, actually uh, suppresses hurricane activities over here, while La Nina conditions, which is the opposite, increase. And this, uh, this year it happened to be La Nina conditions. So, uh, so this year we heard, a lot of... More, more than usual. So more than if, usual. If you heard the word like uh, a lot of floods in Australia, that's typical for La Nina conditions. So we have moderate La Nina conditions this year. Uh, so uh, now it varies. So this is just one thing, but it very depends on the, the winds and the, uh, the, the, all these winds that come out of Africa and where it comes when it's going to have a landfall, landfall or not. So these, these are the conditions that change uh, from year to year. So that we had over the history, if we, if we start having uh, pretty good records over the past 100 years or 150 years, we see variability. We, we see change from one decade to another. We have decades that there were a lot of activity. There were actually a few decades in the 50s, not too much activity. Then in 1992, there was Andrew that impacts South Florida, and then people thought maybe it's the beginning of a new era, and then there was quiet. And then in 2004 and five, we had a lot of uh, hurricanes also in Florida. If everybody, probably people who live in, in the Miami area remember Katrina and Irma, not Irma, Wilma, uh, Wilma, Wilma 2005, and then People said there's going to be more activity because of climate change, but it was quiet for 10 years. And then again, we had uh, quite a few years with a lot of activity. And last year, we had record of activity and we had storms that came at very late in the season and impacted uh, Central America, Honduras, and uh, we didn't have enough and names. And were never impacted, correct? Yeah. We didn't have names. We gave them these uh, Greek names and Greek alphabet. It said you're going to change it because things are going to change. So not always the same Greek name, uh, alphabet names. Uh, but uh, things have changed. Now, the impact of climate change is that we provide more energy. Uh, there's more warmer water on the surface of the ocean, which is the engine of the hurricane. So as climate warms up, uh, we'll have more energy for the storms to be more uh, stronger. stronger. Yeah, to be stronger. The frequency, it's not clear if the frequency will increase, but they're already talking about extending the, the period of uh, the hurricane season because we have storms that start earlier before the actually beginning of the last year. We had Correct. Storms. Last year it wasn't yeah. even in June, June 1, it was May something. Exactly. So the same, maybe we need to increase. So if the water of the ocean become warmer earlier, it means that you can have storms earlier than we used to have. So that means that we'll have an extended hurricane season. Uh, so that can be uh, an impact. And then storm can be more stronger. Like we had the, in 27, was it 17, when we have a Harvey in Houston, and we had over here, we had Irma, and in, uh, in Puerto Rico, we had, yeah. Yeah. had uh, Maria. Yeah. one year, three major hurricanes impacting three different regions. So uh, it can happen. It, it happens. We see that. Now we, we can have a period of another 10 years of quiet, but we see overall, there's more energy for hurricane to develop and to be stronger.
and maybe over a longer time period. So it really correlated to the warm of the ocean. Exactly. And the warm of the ocean is climate change. Exactly. We're really getting. Okay, so uh, we have one, we have a minute, we have a little few minutes for our last question because we live, Florida is a state surrounded by water. And there's also a lot of controversy behind sea level rise. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can see the, the background of uh, my picture is actually, it's a project that's related to the issue of uh, sea level rise. Uh, okay. What we see in the, the picture is, uh, it's a park here in, uh, it's Hollower Park where I installed the station uh, on my uh, right side. Uh, it's a GPS station that measure how uh, the surface of the earth can subside, can move down or up. And this is one thing we can think we hear all the, a lot about sea level rise, but there are situations that actually the surface of the earth changing. And that's something that we measure because area here in Miami, they've been uh, reclaimed land that uh, they've been uh, subjected to, to changes. So there is some subsidence over there. But uh, besides the land changes that we measure using space technology, we also uh, see how sea level is changing. And uh, the, when we look at the sea level, we look, people talk about the global mean sea level. So that's the global, how things are changing for everywhere. We take the average, but it changes like climate, not everywhere the same. It has local and regional effects. And here in South Florida, we have uh, effects from the currents uh, because of the, uh, the Gulf Stream that moves, it moves water and it can change also the, uh, the height of the sea level. And when the, the Gulf Stream is weakened and what happened in the past uh, 10, no, more than 10 years, 20 years, uh, we see that there is also an increase in the sea level along the shores along the, uh, at the US Atlantic coast, uh, much faster than the global mean sea level. So we have here some regional effects that cause, we, we get to see a faster rate of sea level rise along the Florida. Because of the, locali of the location. The location, we have the effect of the, 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 the of the, uh, the Gulf Stream. Also winds are a very important factor. They push water toward the, uh, the land and they also can provide uh, a friction and they slow the, uh, the currents. And that's something that I'm studying these days, the impact of wind on direct, the impact of wind on the sea level rise. So we, we see that there is, a, I see in my study, some correlation between wind, the direction of the wind and where it happens and uh, rapid rates of sea level rise. So uh, we have all of it. So it's here in Florida, we have not just the global what happened due to uh, the warming of the atmosphere and the melting of the, uh, the glaciers in the polar region. We have also local and uh, regional effect due to the ocean dynamics and the winds. Well the high, uh, the high tide that, for example, now we're hearing high tide or the moon tide, which was the giant tide and a lot of the cities experience major flooding. Mm -hmm. That will continue to rise over and over with time? Yes. Uh... That's a good point. So what happens, the, the sea surface is a dynamic surface, is dynamic. It's, we have the high tide, the low tide, and uh, it's not always the same. When we talk about sea level rise, we somehow we forget about that. And we say that everything's gonna rise. But we have days that we have higher tide. So we, we call it here king tide and uh, the uh, sunny side uh, flooding. So we have all of that and it's, because of the, the sea level is rising, we have the impact of this extreme condition when it's the highest, usually here is around in September, October, then we have the highest tide because of the forces of uh, the moon and the sun that exert on the, the, the water. So we have this uh, very high condition 
And because sea level is rising, it will continue to rise and we'll have more, more flooding days uh, during this period of high tides, which is usually in, in, in the fall, in September, October, November, than in the rest of the year. So right now we don't see much of the flooding, but when we'll get to the, the fall season, we'll have more of these uh, high uh, flood days. So it's more about not that we're gonna get more flooded, but we're going to be flooded more, more time. Exactly, we'll, we'll have more flooding days. More and flooding it, days. Yeah, or flooding, it's days or- Or so making it flooding. impossible for all the pipes to work really fast. That's right. Uh, so when, when we have a high uh, sea level condition, um, our uh, drainage system, fluids, uh, sewage system don't work as, as, uh, as good because of the, yes. its gravity base. So that's why in Miami Beach, they change from gravity based drainage system to pump based. So they actually becoming more efficient in draining their if there is a rain during high tide condition, they can drain it out, the rain, but uh, if it's very high above the, the sea walls, then it's not very effective. So it's a combination. There are ways of dealing it, but not forever, because then we need to rise, raise the sea walls all the time. Sea walls. Yeah. She want, very interesting, but we're out of time. Okay, it was a pleasure. Very no, nice. thank you. Thank you so much. This is really interesting. I hope that we create some awareness for those of you who do not believe in climate change. And like Shimon said, it's based on science, not based on whether you believe or you don't believe. So thank you so much. Until next week. And above all, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Gladys.